Hello everybody, welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 with another build for Group A Tarmac Rallying. We're going old school, way old school, and talking about the Dodge Coronet Super B. This is going to be interesting, because I think it can actually do pretty well. Muscle cars have done relatively well when built properly in the right situation on these build series over the years. So, I'm cautiously optimistic about this one. For one key reason. One, it's going to make a lot of horsepower. So that's two reasons. But also because look at the tire sizes. Three, four, fives on the rear. I'm not even sure I want semi-slicks, to be honest. I think I might want sport tires. Nah, I'm going to go with semi-slicks. It eats up a lot of RPI, however, I want semi-slicks, I think. Uh, I kind of like the Coronet hood. It doesn't have a supercharger option, so we're not going to faff around with that. We're going to put all the racing parts on to try and make this big boat handle. It's actually a lot lighter than I thought. We're going to put the sport transmission in. Doesn't really cost as much PI. We'll put that. We'll put this clutch on. I know it is not ideal. It adds a, it adds a bit of PI. It has two PI. And it cuts a bit of weight. Gives us better shifts. I'll take that. Now, we are very light, actually. A lot lighter than I thought for a big American muscle car. Less than 3,000 pounds. We're going to drop that even more with some strategic weight reduction parts. We should need... Any forced induction, I will be surprised if we need forced induction. We do not. Okay, very good. We can cut the weight down by a whole pound while gaining 10 horsepower. I'll take that deal. I don't think we'll be able to get anything else, though. Okay, we can shave out another 10 pounds. I don't know why. I've never understood this about Forza. The drive shaft can let you remove almost come all of the weight borderline race parts. But one flywheel that removes three pounds. Nope, that's S1 class. That's too much. I don't understand that, but I am okay because that means you have nearly 600 horsepower, 567 to be honest. An equal amount of torque, which is very nice. And we're very light for what I thought was going to be a big American boat. But the Super V is less than 2,900 pounds. It's almost less than 2,800 pounds. That is some impressive stuff. I'm actually curious. Can I... Is there any other weight-saving parts I could do? No. So those are all the weight-saving parts added on. That's pretty good, though. That's pretty good. 2,800 pounds, 567 horsepower, 567 torque, massive tires. I'll tell you what, I'm cautiously optimistic. Full disclosure, before I do my first run, the main reason I chose this vehicle is I didn't want to use a Japanese car. We've done two of them in a row now, so that would have been three in a row. I wanted to have some variety, and I chose it because of the purple paint. I love Dodge colors. They're ridiculously silly. You can have this in green and orange and yellow. It's a bonkers thing, but it looks really good in purple. So if it does really well... That would be hilarious, that I chose this purely based off a of purple color. If it does poorly, I chose it purely because of the purple color. You see how that works? It's nice. Now, it has to beat a 242.763 set by the polar opposite of this vehicle, the Lotus Exige. Of course, I say that, it's only a few hundred pounds heavier than the Exige, which is kind of amazing. And it makes over 100 horsepower more, I think. I think the Exige made, what, 450, something like that? I think the Exige was in the, was in the low 450s. Ooh. It does not have the same turn-in as the Exige, that is for sure. But honestly, I don't think that's going to be much of a hindrance. Because I can drive around understeer. Understeer is a very easy thing to drive around. Overseer, it depends on the vehicle, if it's twitchy or not. But understeer is really easy, and this thing has excellent traction, so oversteer is not going to be an issue. 
It's just going to be getting that front end turned in and then powering on the way out. And the acceleration is brutal. Not even necessarily because of the horsepower, it's because of the torque. Having 567 torque is a massive asset. I mean, in a Natchi aspirated vehicle, there is no replacement for displacement. And this proves that in space, at least in the acceleration part, it's brutally fast. I was out of position there, so I can't say whether or not that was caused purely by the handling, but it's definitely not as easy to drive as the Lotus. It remains to be seen if it's fast. This will not be a good run to demonstrate that, because I made a bit of a hash of it. But, it's definitely not as fast through the corners, we'll put it that way. It's more of an American boat than I was initially expecting after I saw the weight figure, but it is still not too shabby to drive. Whether or not it's shabby to drive at the limit, where we're going to be at, I didn't actually need to hit the brakes there early because I was going to fly off into the braking zone, and even then, I still locked up on the landing. I mean, that was full throttle out of the hairpin with 567 torque, and it barely got any wheel spin. This thing is a beast. Okay, we should absolutely annihilate the speed record down the straightaway, because, you know, 567 horsepower in an A-class car. And I think the straight line speed record is like 140-something? 140? I don't know if this has more gears. I don't want to find out, to be honest. I might find out on the end, just spam through the gears. Oh, so we are at 143. Not as fast as I was thinking. Kind of interesting. Oh, we do have five gears. Okay. Yeah, not a great run from me. Made a few mistakes. That being said, not a great time for a first run. Not a bad time, but if he can't improve significantly, then yeah, that's going to... It's going to need to require some work, but I have, a, I have a feeling it can go faster. Second attempt is purely going to be controlling the understeer. If we can control the understeer, get used to it, figure out how it works to get the best possible line without running wide or hitting walls or anything, if we can figure that out, I think it stands a pretty good chance of doing really well. Because it has the acceleration, we just need to figure out how it drives. And that is what the first and second runs are for. Getting good, clean times, figuring out how the thing works, how far can you push it, how extreme can you go under brakes, which I gotta say, brakes on this are not bad. Again, you would think classic American muscle car, absolutely hopeless, but as we've seen on Forza before, it doesn't seem to matter. Ooh, that's a stupid amount of grip. That's a stupid amount of grip through there. I was a little wide because I got my front turn in a little skewy, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, you think, oh, it's a big American muscle car, it's not going to do all that well, but force is weird. And it allows cars that have really big tires to do really well, even when they probably shouldn't because of suspension and body dynamics and everything like that, the actual inner workings of the car. Forza doesn't care about that, okay? Whoa! That was, uh, some commitment there. We'll put it mildly. Because it's a little sketchy in the high speeds when you're going flat out through there. You can go flat out through there. It's just a bit scary. Quite a bit scary. We are closer, though, to our, our target. We carry more speed than they're just about. Keep it on the road. It's, it's definitely not happy at 10 tenths, but you can manage it because the tires are so big. That's what force it gets sort of weird, is that massive tires do wonders, even when the car probably shouldn't be doing as well as it is. Like, we're actually on track to beat the Lotus at this rate because of tire size and just sheer grip and acceleration of the the super B. I mean that's just stupid speed through there. Nicely done. Get lay on the brakes. Just about getting his soft brakes are again solid. No real issues with this vehicle. That's a really fast Peugeot though. <laughs> 
I know it's not a Lotus. I, for those of you who didn't watch the second video of the series, I did practice with the Lotus after I, uh, after I ran it and shattered my personal best. So, um, yeah, I did, I, I shed, I shaved like a second and a half off, so I'm using another, another time. That's a much better time. We are, uh, not quite, we're, uh, fraction behind the Volkswagen. We're not going to win. That was a pretty solid run. And it's half a second slower than the, the Exige. But I think we can get a podium. We should be able to beat the Golf. And maybe if we get a perfect run, maybe we can, we can catch up to the Lexus. But that'll be a, that'll be a tough ask. Last attempt. We got our good run in on the second attempt. So... A solid entry in this catalog. No real issues on that run. So now we just go, you know, full frontal, absolute charge as hard as we dare. Which is difficult in a vehicle like this because of the understeer. The harder you push it, the later you brake, the more prone to understeer you get. And that's bad for lap time. So we're going to try to avoid that. But I just don't think this vehicle has the pace. We should be able to get the... The Golf. We should be able to get that. But you can just see through the corners, it's just lacking that, that finesse that the Lotus had. And to a lesser extent, the Lexus had. It just isn't quite there. It's just a bit too heavy. It's a bit too slow. It had, Two nine fives on the front instead of two eight fives. That three oh five something like that. I think it would do really well, but it doesn't have those and it shows. Let me look at that. I'm trying to push as hard as I can. I'm trying to push. I'm trying to go for it, and that's what happens. That's what happens. It just it just can't turn. We got a good run through there. We got that apex spot on. I'm trying to break on time. I think that bounce into the wall is going to cost us. I mean, it didn't really cost us a huge amount of speed, but every little bit counts on this run. Whoa. And I'm pushing it so hard to catch the Lotus that I don't think we're going to go fast. I think we're going to end up overdriving the car, essentially. That is a, a real risk. Oh, yep. And you see, I'm, I'm locking up. I'm pushing too deep into the corners. I'm just making a fool of it, really. And it's because I, I have to. I have to try. I have to go as hard as I can. Break as late as I there just to try and keep up. And it's not really there. It's a shame. It's a real shame with the, the core. I had such high hopes for it after I saw the first run. And then it just sort of never really advanced much better. I mean, it was, it's better, obviously. Everything's better after the first run. But it just isn't handling it like I thought. That was close. Nearly ruined my run completely there. By, I grazed the wall with the side instead of hitting it head on. Yeah. We're, we are actually farther ahead somehow, despite that awful run. We are actually further ahead than last time, so we might manage to squeak a podium, but it will not have been easy. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, wait, what? <laughs> I we squeaked a podium, and by podium I mean, I mean the win. By exactly, I mean exactly a tenth of a second faster than the Lotus. Forget everything I said for that entire run, because... On the last corner, I nailed it. I nailed the brakings, I nailed the turn, I nailed the acceleration. And I edged it by a nose. <laughs> huh. Well, that makes my run there sound kind of stupid, doesn't it? Because... Huh. That's uh, surprising, to say the least. There you go. We have a new leader. <laughs> it held on for five episodes, but the Lotus has been beaten by a dodge. 
And it's not even a Viper, it's a Coronet from 1970. And again, like the Lotus, it can go faster. It can go so much faster. That was not exactly a clean run. I bounced off the walls twice, got super lucky in that those bounces didn't actually cost me any time because I hit them with the side of the car and not the front left or front right corner. But it did it. This, that run down the straightaway, that really the last third was phenomenal. The exit of the canyon and then the straightaway section, the final corner, perfect. You could not ask for a better run with that vehicle. And it did it. Wow. I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. But that will be it for this episode of Forza Horizon 5. I'll be back with more.